we are talking about the best practices in coding and we'll generalize it so that uh, for any language it can be implemented or it can be understood so some basic issues in every development team is first is the functional discipline issues in coding number of years of experience does not match delivery and by the time they actually become good coders they are promoted to leads 70% of the whole employees belong to 0 to 4 years of experience uh, say for example if, if i compare between the countries in india senior developer means 3 to 5 years of experience in usa senior developer means 6 to 10 years of experience so there is a huge gap in expectation quality so coding is not a rocket science you know though logic is required iq is has to be there the rework time in coding is the actual killer 20 to 25% of the time is spent in reworking the software that means fix the mistakes so in a mobile phone can you insert sim card wrongly means in uh, the manner which in which it will not take you cannot because the sim card design is like that so the highest level maturity is not to give an opportunity to make mistakes um, as a kid you were asked and helped to brush the teeth so it was tough to brush teeth but one fine morning you start brushing teeth by yourself then it has become a habit you need not to be told to do brushing by anyone and now you are well versed with it you don't even think that is there any science involved in brushing so we start with the commenting because the things which are necessary for coding which are considered to be a good practice is commenting is necessary for maintaining any program without commenting the program is not complete do not assume that the other person who reads this program will actually understand your program clearly and if commenting is not done at the beginning it is forgotten program is a physical file you need to comment the following at the top that is header you have to have a header what program does what program achieves and who coded who coded it okay this is this should be on the top and then the classes that is the comment at the beginning of the class about what the class does so what class does what about the class the class say employee so this class is used to manage all information about employees and at least specific data this is an example you take and methods within classes now the class is taken what about the method inside the classes what this method function procedure does what are the parameters and their purpose what are the return values so this information has to be commented and you comment before every loop any loop is there comment before this and comment before every file or database operation and comment before every if condition this is what commenting is required in your practices so you know if you are a team leader if your team member comes with a code that does not have these comments what will you do you take over a program from maintenance from another person and that program has no comments what are you going to do the company hands over a project to client programs do not have comments what the clients will say so all these conditions should not be there then we come to the second part that is the naming convention readability improves understanding so that is uh, that will further improve the final maintainability so if programs are not consistent maintenance is very tough if 20 developers work in a project and each one names the function in the way he or she wants will the client approve the same we must have a document on naming conventions so that all these 20 follow the same name condition and it should be consistent So every document must be named properly, and it must be it must be stored in a proper folder. You need to have a convention for naming for program, for classes, for methods, variables, for labels in programs, reusable library functions. So there are established methods like Pascal casing, Camel casing, etc. Unless you will tend to use mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters, underscore, etc. So the ultimate aim is to achieve consistency consistency across the programs. then hard coding avoid hard coding is placing a number or quoted text inside active code is called the hard coding this is a this is very deadly as the program restricts itself to this hard coded value so number or a quoted text they are hard coded 
To make a change, you need to change code, recompile, and redeploy. So, usual way to avoid hard coding is to use constants at the top of the program. Here also, you need to edit the program, but the change is only at one place. Other way is to put all configurable values in, say, certain uh, CSV or DAT file. So, every program must read the name value pair from the file and later use them in the code. For example, max length 150, port 8097. These are also hard, code, hard coded, but you know, some CSV, INI, or DAT file you can write it. Then comes the modularity of code, what it means. Modularity is important for maintenance. If you want to um, reduce the effort of maintenance, you have to do the proper modularity, make modu uh, proper modules. Do not write lengthy me methods or procedures. We can split the modules which are based on functional operation as per requirements. A piece of code is used in more than one place. And the logical breakdowns of events in the functionality. So modularity must be decided right at the uh, design level itself. And modular programs are easy to debug. Fixes done on the modular programs are easy to isolate from other regression effects. Then comes the other aspect of uh, good practices, best practices that is examining the loop. A loop is repeat some logic for a specific number of times as long as condition is true or false. So if this is not checked, it can run forever, infinitely and can bring down the server. Uh, for example, this is, a, this is a sample of a loop and uh, these gateways are the check posts where we must watch the vari variables, loop counters and loop flags. So these are the gateways. Ensure proper resetting of flags and counters and check their values and gateway of the loops and never allocate memory inside a loop. Please understand, never allocate memory inside loop. So never instantiate a class inside a loop. If needed, close it within the loop. Usually companies do not suggest more than three levels in the loop, which is highest. Then comes the exceptions. Exceptions, issues may be caused by the programmer. Issues may be caused by the system, these exceptions. And most of the languages allow try, catch, or on error go to exceptions. And exceptions is also an error condition. That is, we do not know what will happen. So any file operations handle exceptions because file may not exist, file is already opened by someone, file does not have any privilege, or file is already full. So any file operation you need to have handle this exception. And any database, again, you have to have certain exceptions to be handled. Database, you may not have rights, database is down, connection is exhausted. When it comes to memory, there are also certain exceptions, no memory exception. Pointer writing in privileged memory, array bound breach, any external device, IO operations. So your program accesses webcam or printer. Then comes the performance issues. We need to monitor CPU, memory and network. That means memory is directly related to variables and objects. So do not declare huge arrays or objects. CPU is consumed more when you deal with database or files or devices. Any operations, database operation, open, late and close the correction properly and early. So usage of indexes in query, this should be examined. Any column used in where condition of database query must have index on it. And any memory allocated must be freed, else the program will shut down after some time. Any object which is, which is instantiated must be uh, released, else system will be depleted of memory and hence performance will come down. These are issues related with the performance. Then we talk about the program logic. Usually, the logic design will be provided to the developer. So if it is not provided, say, just take 30 minutes and write the logic of the program in English first. Do not start the coding right away. You will make so many assumptions and it will spoil the show. So get the logic approved by the team lead and then start coding. And developers usually feel that this takes time, but it reduces the time effectively while you are coding and reworking. And since developers are not used to documenting, they feel it is not their job as they miss a lot of finer points. If you write the logic first, you will get a lot of clarification at that time itself and hence the code will come out clean. So what are coding standards? Coding standards are guidelines for code style and documentation. The dream is that any developer familiar with the guidelines can work on any code that followed them and standard range from a simple series of statements to the involved documents. Areas which are covered are program design, naming conventions, formatting conventions, documentations, possible even licensing, possibly even li licensing. 
So we are trying to reiterate what we have just said. So let us see them. Why have coding standard? Because you want greater consistency between developers. You want you know development easier and to maintenance maintain it in a good way and also to save your time and money. So prime directive document every time you violate a standard. No standard is perfect for any application, but failure to comply with your standard require a comment. There is ampler law of standards. Industry standard, organization standard, project standard, no standard. So these are the standards. So the most commonly accepted uh, a, a standard. The easier it is for team members to communicate in that language. Invent standards when necessary, but don't waste time creating something that you won't be able to use later. All languages have recommended coding standards available. It is well worth the effort to find and use the industry standards. Push for organization standard whenever possible. So good coding style, as I said, let us revisit them. Names, use full English descriptors. Use mixed case to make name readable. Use abbreviations sparingly and consistently. Avoid long names. Avoid leading and trailing underscores. Documentation, document the purpose of every variable. Document why something is done, not just what. So along with what, you have to write why. Accessors. Use get variable and set variable functions on uh, all class variables unless class is being used solely as a data structure. Member function documentation. What and why member function? What they does? What they does? What they are for? The parameters and return value. How function modifies object? Precondition, post condition, concurrency issues, restrictions, and then internal documentation. That is the control structures. Why as well as what the code does? Difficult or complex code processing order. There are three rules. Coding standards needn't be onerous. Means find a standard that works for your team. Best for your team. Standardize early. The effort to bring your old work into the standard will be too great otherwise. And finally, encourage a culture where standards are followed. These are three rules. If you follow it, you know your program, your code, your product will be very good. Thank you so much. Take care.